Okay, brand new CNC 5x5 from Rocktech. I am very excited. I've been kicking the can down the road for several years and getting a larger, more industrial CNC in the shop. I've always wanted one, and we're gonna talk more about that in a little bit, how it's gonna fit into my furniture production, how I plan to use it, um, how it fits into the world of craft, and does it dilute craft? Does it take away from fine furniture? Those are all great questions, and I think it's something we should talk about. I can't help but notice. I didn't even realize I had it in the frame. My daughter's art, she's pretty creative. Uh, it's amazing what comes out of a six-year-old's mind. First thing I wanna do is put the cards on the table because obviously you, my viewers, are the most important asset uh, to this channel. And I think it's always important for me to be very clear on what's going on. So Rock Tech reached out to me in the last year wanting to put a CNC in my machine. And did I just say CNC in my machine? Wanting to put a CNC in my shop. So yeah, that makes more sense. So I was really excited and humbled by that because I obviously felt like, you know, I don't have the largest YouTube channel. So for them to point to pick me out was very awesome. Um, they also mentioned that one thing that I really liked about, you know, them approaching me is that they wanted it to be in a shop where furniture was being made. And it wasn't just knocking out plywood parts, which is okay, but I plan on doing more with it than that. So we went back and forth. I, you know, this is an imported machine. I want y'all to know that. And I was a little skeptical at first. I talked a lot with Robert Jones, who runs Rock Tech USA. Uh, he gave me a lot of info. I did some research and um, I felt good about it. So we partnered up. They sent me this uh, five by five. I originally was gonna go for a four by four just because I don't have a lot of space in here. But Robert talked me into the five by five and having the machine in the shop now, I'm very glad he did. Because uh, a four by four probably would have been too small. Okay, so with all that out on the table, let's go ahead and get this machine. And I can tell you right now, uh, having a, brought some heavy equipment into the shop, it's very exciting on the days when you get new equipment, but it's also super stressful because you've got to get a very heavy piece of equipment off of a trailer and into your shop without damaging it, damaging yourself, uh, dropping it, just you know, breaking things basically, which I tend to be pretty good at doing. So let's check that footage out and then let's talk more about what I plan on doing with this machine. Okay, so I had to rent a forklift, obviously, to get this off the truck, and then the machine weighed a little over 2,000 pounds. Um, I was told to get a lift with six-foot forks, that that would be ideal, um, and I asked for that. They said they only had one with five-foot forks, and they sent me one with four-foot forks. So, immediately we were challenged because uh, the pallet was huge. It was like 80 inches, it was like an 80-inch cube, basically, 80 inches by 80 inches by 80 inches tall. And um, what we ended up having to do is just strap it, obviously with a strap, around the forklift because the forks, they just, the tips just barely got on the middle part of the pallet. So we were, I was fortunate enough that I was able to do that. I was very thankful also for this very nice delivery man who uh, we, we talked for a while. He worked in the oil field. He knew what he was doing with this heavy equipment. And he was willing to have patience with me because I'm a big green on a forklift. So he helped talk me through it, kind of get it off the truck and um, just basically pulled the truck out of the way. Okay, it turns out that the pallet barely fits through the opening of my shop, just inches to spare. And this turns out to be a really comical series because I, I didn't even realize it until I watched the footage, but my dad is trying to direct me from in the shop. He's also trying to film the, what's happening and um, I can't hear anything he's saying. He doesn't even realize it. He's talking to me and I'm doing the exact opposite because I don't know what he's saying. And I've already got the mentality of, I've got steel walls on either side, uh, just, ram this thing in there. I'm hitting wood against steel. It's going to be okay. There's nothing behind me uh, in front of that box, so I should be okay. My dad's trying to tell me to stop. I can't hear him. It's just kind of a complete mess. Stop! Stop! Okay, come. No, stop! Don't look. Okay, come back. Stop. Drop it down just a touch. Uh -oh. Okay, 
Okay, don't go any lower. Stop there. Okay. No, don't go any lower. How's it look? It, you're touching over here on this side. What? You're touching on that side. You're against the door frame on that side. Oh, I, I'm just going to have to rub the door frame. I can't see or hear anything. So oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was yelling at you trying to get you to stop. You're okay up top. Okay, come straight back. Okay, it's as far as you can go. What am I hitting? The bandsaw. Oh, jeez. Ah. Oh, no, is my GoPro in there? No, I picked it up. Okay, so after that wonderful display of communication between my dad and I, I this is a point where I didn't realize it till later in the day, but I made a pretty big mistake. I should have left the machine sitting right at the entrance of the shop, taken the sides off the pallet, used the forks to pick the machine up and slide the pallet base out. I had pallet jacks rented, two pallet jacks to maneuver it around in the shop. Those would have easily gotten under the machine and moved it, but instead I thought, you know, I didn't. Even, I just thought it needed to stay on the pallet, so we left it on the pallet. We moved it into its position in the back corner of the shop on the pallet and at that point realized I have to get it off the pallet. And before we did that, I, I, there were several things. The, the big control box which controls the machine was stacked on the, on the top of the bed and uh, that thing was heavy. I was surprised. It must be made, made out of some heavy, because there's not much inside of it. It's just an electrical component. So it must be made out of some heavy gauge steel. Um, the two of us, it was way too much weight for the two of us. Uh, we managed to slide it off kind of the side of the machine. We put a blanket on the machine, slid it down, got the wheels down, but it was on caster. So as we tried to pick it up and get it upright, it wanted to roll away. No, 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 okay. We're in a bad, we're in a bad situation. <laughs> got it, I got it, I got it, okay. Yeah, I can hold it. Hold on, hold on, you're gonna have to get that out now. Can you hold it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hurry. I lost it. Okay. Gosh. <laughs> You're right. I just thought I could hold it. So, getting past that uh, bit of craziness without any damages. We had to scheme up a way to get the machine in the air so we could get the pallet out from underneath. First I tried to get the forklift around the back of the shop and boom the arm in. There's no way to do it. You couldn't do it. The angle was all wrong. So I got the chain hoist we used on the Argosy that we used to pick the shell up on my gantry cranes. I got those, hooked them up to the uh, metal channel, the purlin on the ceiling, and was able to lift the machine up with those. Uh, and it was honestly sketchy but what isn't sketchy when you're doing it this way I pulled the pallet out uh, we pulled the pallet out we put the feet on screw the feet on and dropped it down we had to do a little bit of work to get it positioned just the way I liked it um, but finally after almost a full day of work it was uh, in position pallet was out and I could start putting my shop back together Okay, so it is all hooked up with exception to power. I've got my electrician come out to do all that. This is a single phase machine, so it runs on just a 220 volt, uh, I think it's a 30 amp breaker, and then there is a vacuum pump with it as well. So this does have a vacuum table. I do not have the spoil board on it yet. That'll be uh, coming soon. It is a four stage uh, table, so it's kind of cool. You can set uh, where you want the, pr the vacuum happening at different stages on your table. <clears throat> I had a dust collection run to it. Uh, it's just a four inch line dropped from the ceiling. Got that all hooked up and ready to go. I used to have a line running down to my radial arm saw, which was now no longer in the shop. So I just took all the components of that and redirected it down here. Also it has, I've got the compressed air hooked up to it down here. 
And then for the vacuum, the pump is a hurricane pump. Uh, this thing looks to be pretty awesome. It is super, super heavy. I ran all the PVCs. So you've got a flexible line running into the machine and then it comes up uh, to three inch pipe and into a filter canister and down into the actual uh, pump system. And then I think that's an exhaust down there. I'm still figuring all this out. So this pump will provide the vacuum and hold down for the parts that go on the machine. Also, when the machine comes, it does not have the two side motors on it. I got those two motors installed. Everything went together very easily. No issues, all the bolt holes lined up. Everything came on. It also had to put on the this little oiler here to keep the machine all oil and lubed up. Control box here, um, this is a lot of buttons. Hopefully I can figure that out, so we'll see. Looking forward to getting this under power, getting it running. I've got a lot to do that and I want to talk with you guys now about my plans for this machine. So what I want to do with this machine, there's three main things I want to do. One is I want to make, I want to build a prototype new furniture with it. Two is I want to be able to make jigs. This thing's going to be very good at making jigs for different parts of furniture. Three is I can actually make furniture parts on this. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of other things I have planned with it, but those are the core things. I do have an online store where I sell cutting boards and things like that that this machine can help make. Those have been sold out for a couple years because I don't have time to make them, but hopefully this will help me do that. All of those things I'm going to start showing you in my future build. I've got several builds coming up where we're going to be using this machine uh, to make jigs for furniture and it's just going to be cool to see that workflow and how that works. Also we've got the Argosy. Now I have to be honest with you, for those of you who follow along on the Argosy, I've kind of put it on hold for this machine because it's going to be a valuable tool in making the interior furniture for the Argosy. Already got things ready to go. I'm going to start making walls and panels with it uh, as soon as I get it under power. So there's going to be just a whole lot I can do with this machine. Uh, it's going to open up a lot of new door doors for my furniture, for my shop, uh, for my workflow. So for me as a furniture maker, uh, I started off uh, in my mid-20s after taking a class from Paul Sellers. I built furniture entirely by hand. Uh, I learned how to use hand planes, chisels, everything done on the bench and uh, there's, an, there's a lot of value in that. I, that's the way I've operated. I brought machines slowly into my shop but it wasn't until the last five years that I really started tooling up. I got the wide belt, I got the S4S uh, and started getting bigger machinery and I think if I can say anything to the younger uh, men and women, younger woodworkers watching this channel I think it's super important that you learn the traditional te techniques. We have to continue passing those on. Those have to continue um, to stay with our culture, with the craft. Uh, we can't replace the hand tool and bench work with this. If you want to be a furniture maker and you're going to learn to build furniture, I think you've got to learn how to use hand tools. Um, and I think it's an important part of the process. Now for me personally, I always look, what's my end goal? What am I trying to do? I'm trying to create heirloom furniture. I want to create furniture that's going to outlast me, outlast the client. Uh, and become generational. It's going to be passed down through the family. And in order to do that, there's certain techniques or certain uh, ways we have to build to create that longevity. And the way I've learned, I, obviously from some great teachers, but also by looking at old antiques, because those pieces have stood the test of time, we can look at those, look at how they're made, and put that into our modern day furniture. Now taking all that, for me personally, I think I can really use any tool or machine to reach that goal. I just want to find the balance between modern day CNC's uh, and old school techniques. There's a balance and I think it's fun to play with that and find it. So that's my philosophy. That's how I feel about it. Uh, I think it's a great dialogue. I'd love to hear everyone's opinion. Shoot me a comment. Let me know how you feel about uh, bringing technology into uh, furniture making. Uh, if you think it's uh, is good, bad, or just don't care, whatever. Just leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Also, if you're interested in learning more about this machine, um, the features of it, how much it costs, how to get it, I put a link in the description to Robert. You can reach out to him via phone or email. He can answer any of your questions. Very knowledgeable, very helpful. Um, he is the contact and distributor for the US and Canada market for RockTech. Uh, so his information is in the description. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And we'll see you next time.